good morning from my side as well. Uh, me, like Walter Klöpfer, I would like to thank the organizers that I have the opportunity to speak here. Uh, I try to show you how the data from EcoInvent can support you in your work in order to have completeness, transparency, and consistency within the results that you are calculating for your product carbon footprints. The EcoInvent Center, shortly at the beginning, two or two, three words about the EcoInvent Center. Then some words for those of you that don't know the EcoInvent database about what we have today, what is the database today. But the main part of the presentation will be about EcoInvent tomorrow, the next version, version three of EcoInvent. And I try to show you what will be the advantages in the sense of completeness, in a sense of transparency and consistency with all the changes that we are doing at the moment on the technical, but also on the content side of the database and, and end up with, with two, three conclusions. The EcoInvent Center is a competent center from uh, the ETH domain plus the Swiss Federal Agricultural Research Institution, IRT. Um, the EcoInvent Center is hosted at EMPA in uh, St. Gallen, Switzerland. I'm working for EMPA. Um, the mission that we have is to promote the use and the good practice for life cycle inventories. Uh, our vision is that we can be the preferred source for LCI data on a global level. And the strategy strategy that we follow is therefore that we try to provide the most relevant, most transparent uh, data sets in order that on a global level you can much more quickly calculate uh, LCA studies. EcoInvent was created in 1997 but actually the institutions that are behind EcoInvent have a much larger tradition in, in LCA. Uh, EMPA, the institution where I work for, has published its first report about uh, LCA. It was in the packaging area in 1984. So we have more than 25 years of, of experience with uh, LCA. You see here the, the most important steps in the development of the current version of the database. 2003, there was the first publication of version one. 2007, there came version two of the database. EcoInvent today, it's a, an online accessible database that has uh, fully interlinked data. Um, means every data set that is requesting the European electricity mix as an input is using the same data set for the electri uh, European electricity mix that is in the database. Uh, we have more than 4,000 data sets, so more than 4,000 product systems that can be used from the user of the database. Uh, they are linked to all major impact assessment methods, so you can calculate the global warming potential, so you can calculate the carbon footprint with this data, but you can also calculate uh, the eco indicator as, as one of the most used uh, single score indicators in the LCA world, for example. We have an independent quality assurance mechanism, means that each data set was verified uh, by a, another institution within the EcoInvent uh, system. The data are accessible on, on different levels. I come back on this later on in a, in a, in a picture. And uh, we use an ISO compatible format uh, in, in XML technology so that we can say already now EcoInvent, it's, it's a consistent database due to the verification, the quality insurance, it's a reliable database and we try to be as transparent as possible in the database. I think we can say it's a it's got the global success story. We have done more, more than two and a half thousand uh, licenses. Most of them are sold in combination with tools like SEMA Pro, like Gabi, like Umberto. 
and, and so on. And there are a variety of, of eco-design tools, so tools that allow you not to make full LCAs, but simplified uh, uh, calculations in this direction that are also using information out of the EcoInvent database behind in order to have in these simplified tools also high quality data that you can do your calculations. What's our e idea for tomorrow? What we try to do is we try to, to broaden up the, the, uh, the supply base for our data. For the moment, most of the data came out of projects within the institutions that are behind EcoInvent. And here we try with new tools to, to get contributions also from LCA experts that are outside these institutions, from LCA experts all over the world. And therefore we try to, to limit the information we need from the data supplier on, on the lowest level possible in order to avoid that he has to do some kind of allocation criteria, etc., etc. We try to be more complete uh, on the level of the entire database, but also on the level of individual data sets. You will see on another slide what this means. And we try to, to, to enhance also the transparency of the data, that when you use the data, you can easily see what the data represents. Is this data set really representing what you are looking for? And we try also to get more consistency, a next level of consistency into the database. Uh, keywords here, market models, system models, I'm coming on, 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 on this more explicitly. When we look on the data supply, we, we currently work on, on different tools in order to facilitate the data supply into the database. Um, the idea there is clearly to make it easier for third parties to contribute to this database. As we are aware, it's, it's not possible for five Swiss research institutions to gather data all over the world in a, in a high quality in order to put them into such, such a project like, like this database. Uh, we try to get a broader support for new data sets, but also for the existing data sets. All these data sets, they have been established based on the best knowledge available for these data sets, but sometimes companies have better information, have newer information, and are probably eager to share this information with the users of these kind of, of databases. And what we want to do is we want to keep the the quality level that we, we achieved with our database. So we don't want to make any uh, concessions on the level of, of quality here. We want to keep a strict control, uh, mainly with the editorial board, where we will have specialists for each industrial sector that will be responsible for the review process of a single data set that is related to this industrial sector. I said before, we try to, to reduce the amount of information that uh, a data supplier has to bring in. We try to, to go on a, I would say, on a as simple as possible, but consistent and transparent unit process describing just the activity, the technology of an activity that takes place. No allocation factors have to be applied. You simply define what is the reference product that goes out and what are eventual further products, what are waste amounts that are coming out of this process. And allocation questions will be then dealt with on the level of the database so that the allocation can be applied in a consistent way across the whole database. Of course, the data collection process needs to be documented and literature sources, there will be reference directly in the data set in order that the user of the data sets has a maximum of transparency and can follow and see where this information is coming from, what is it re exactly representing. I said completeness on the level of whole database. Here, clearly, we want to cover all aspects of, of the economy. For all different sectors, we will have at least one data set in the next version of the database. Of course, we cannot cover from the beginning on all sectors on the same level of details. But we want to start having at least one data set in each sector, and from this data set out, we can then start and further expand and further detail 
the, the information about each sector. And we have a comprehensive document with quality guidelines for establishing a data set where there is uh, aspects uh, described how you have to deal with uh, topics there, mass balance, carbon balance, for example, uh, the elementary exchanges, how you have to collect information and so on, in order that all data sets follow the same rules and, and are consistent among them and can be really used in a database and can support the user of the database with a consistent system in the end. Concerning transparency, the objective is that the information that you can find in a data set is sufficient that you can judge if this data set is appropriate for the use you want to do with this data set. Therefore, we will put the documentation not in separate documents, but we will integrate all data set specific information directly in the data set. So you have all information in, in one place. At the moment, there are PDF reports where the documentation is in it, and, and so you have to go for a chemical, for example, a chemical product, you have to go into a report of 900 pages and have to try to find there the chapter that is describing your chemical. And this will be facilitated. We put this information directly into the data set. Last, and I think probably also for, for you, most important point is the consistency of such a database. In order that you have the quality in the results, you need consistent uh, data. Here, what we have is this data quality guideline that was mentioned before. So we have one data quality guideline that is valuable for the whole database. Uh, there will be no overlaps between the data sets. There will be no double counting. So all emissions, for example, will be on the most detailed level possible. And where there is some group indicators like NM, VOCs, uh, we then subtract those substances that are individually in the database. And we take off the cutoffs that we have at the moment. We have a common, transparent, unlinked level for the unit process data. And based on this, we can then calculate different systems. What we use for this are what we call market data sets that make the links between the different data sets. And according to the different system models, we can define different market models. Are we using average technology? Are we using uh, the, the latest technology, uh, et cetera, et cetera? So there will be linking algorithms that are based on properties, specific properties that are defined from the data supplier uh, within the database. So the whole system will then look like this. You will always have a global data set. You have probably some national data sets. And then we can calculate automatically for the rest of the world a specific data set. And based on these, not on the global, but on the others, we then can make a market mix. And in the end, what you are interested in is the product relate, related to a specific market. And this data set you then can use in your study. And as I mentioned before, we will calculate it for different system models, the information. And you will have access on all these four levels that are shown here, from the unlinked raw data, in a way, up to LCIA results carbon footprint, the global warming potential, as one possibility on this level. What is foreseen at the moment for, for version 3 is that we calculate four different system models. One, we call it true value allocation. That is, in a way, the allocation system that is currently in EcoInvent. There will be a system based on revenue allocation, so on economic allocation. And there will be two substitution models, one based on constraint markets and technologies, and another one on the constraint supply of, of byproducts according to the ILCD uh, handbook. With all this, I think that we can continue to be one of the most transparent, a very well documented, consistent, and complete database, really covering a global level in, 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 in the next step. And this Assured quality of the data that you can find in EcoInvent can be a very 
reliable base, a really reliable tool for <coughs> environmental assessments, not only in the sector of LCA, where EcoInvent is coming from, but also in the areas of material flow analysis, in the area of product carbon footprints, because in the end, what you are using is always the same kind of information. You need information about material energy flows within your system. I think this was my last slide with this. Thank you for your attention.